Hey everybody, it's Mary and it's so right. And today I'm going to be talking about yarn couching with embroidery. And I'm using the Husqvarna Viking Designer Sapphire 85. So I'm going to show you here. I stitched out the sample of what I'm going to stitch while you're watching. This design is in the machine and it wasn't categorized as a yarn couching design but I decided to try it and it worked out just great. So let me tell you, when you're doing anything with couching, with embroidery especially, you don't want something that is stitch intensive. You want something that's open airy and travels far from the other ones. You don't want them like right next to each other. So in this case, it was kind of like a serpentine design that was built in the machine. and. Those of you that have a machine like this, you might notice that I have certain marks here that were part of the embroidery. Before it started the design, it stitched these marks, which allows you to connect designs one to the other, which is endless work. But I'm not going to use that. I just wanted to point it out to you that if you would pick a design like this, you would end up seeing these at the beginning. So maybe you want to create a border and you want to connect one pattern to the other and you would use these markings. But today that part is not what I'm really talking about. I want to show you how to stitch yarn with embroidery. When you buy the yarn couching set, this is for embroidery because there is another one that is for sewing. This is for the embroidery. And with it, you're going to get certain accessories. You're going to get clips. You'll have four sets of clips because depending on your model of your Viking depends on which set you would use because these are gonna clip into the back of your machine under the handle part. When you lift your handle, underneath are these openings and you're gonna place these on here. They're gonna help guide the yarn nicely through to the machine, to the needle. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my yarn and you're gonna take a lot of it and you wanna do what we call puddle. You're gonna puddle it behind the machine. Then you're going to take it and place it into the guides. Then you're going to bring it down behind the machine and under where the needle will be. Now before I continue, I want to point out these two things. So these two guides are not for this machine. So I'm going to put these aside. You're also going to get with it these two feet. They look like your R foot for embroidery if you've, if you've done embroidery, um, but they're different and they have a number one and a number two. Number one is for finer yarns, maybe something skinnier. I'm using a heavy yarn, so I'm using number two. So the hole is big, a slight bit bigger than number one. So I'm gonna put number one away. Now the foot, because it's got that hole in it, I need to put the yarn through there. You're also gonna get this tool with the, the set. So you're gonna take your yarn, and you're gonna put it through the loop. And then you're going to put that through the hole. It makes it so easy to feed it through there. So now that I did that, now I will attach it to the machine. And it's gonna go on just like the R foot would. The R foot is the one that would be for embroidery, standard embroidery. So I'm gonna just put this on here Make sure you don't get your thread caught in there. That would be a disaster. There we go. So now the tail is gonna go to the side and as it goes to stitch, I'm going to just hold this tail uh, so it grabs it nicely. That hole is gonna help to guide the yarn so well under the needle. And I'm using black thread the reason I'm using black is for you to see. Otherwise, I would get a, a thread that matches this and so that it blends in nicely. I want you to look over here at the sample. When I started it, I was using a thread that matched and it sh you can't see the thread. It blended in so well, but then I decided to try another color, not just so you could see it. I wanted to see would it make it look prettier. 
Um, and actually, I didn't like it, but I left it here for you to see. So you'll see the other thread that was here, where when I was doing it with the matching color, it looked fine. I stopped it, and then I re-threaded with the other color. So I am going to use black thread so you can see the stitching. On the screen, it's telling me that I should attach the correct hoop, and I confirm. And here's the design that was in the machine that I'm going to use. But I am going to jump past the first color because that was where it did those registration marks that I don't want because I'm not going to do an endless. So I'm just going to jump to my next color by touching this. So now I've bypassed. Oh, and that's a, oh my goodness, this is so important for you to see. While, when I hit that, the hoop traveled to the back and it bumped something that was in the back of the machine. Don't let that happen. You've got to make sure that your area is totally clear of anything that obstructs the movement of the hoop and the arm. I'd like to say that I did that on purpose so you could see that, but actually I forgot about that. So don't do that. Okay, now because it bumped something in the back, I had to turn the machine off and recalibrate so that it put everything into its proper place. But what's really great on this machine is I've got a message. Your embroidery ended unexpectedly. Do you want to resume the embroidery? And I'm going to confirm. And it won't make the mistake of the calibration where it bumped in the back. It will bring the design onto the screen where it should be. And I'm gonna clear, it's, I, it wants to clear the embroidery arm. It's bringing it into position and my design is back on the screen. I am gonna confirm, it wants me to attach the hoop, but let me clarify now what happened before. I've got to make sure that nothing is going to obstruct the movement of the hoop or the embroidery arm. So I'm just going to pull the machine forward so that when it does move the hoop, I won't have that problem. So now I'm going to confirm and it wants me to attach. So I'm going to put this in here. And now my hoop will not hit anything in the back. All right, so now I'm gonna come back here. I am on the second color, which I'm bypassing the first color like I mentioned, and we're ready to start going. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold my tail of thread and my tail of yarn, and I'm going to touch start. And it's gonna take a few stitches. It stops so I can trim my tail of my th um, embroidery thread that is stitching the yarn down. Okay, so I'm gonna get my scissors and I'm gonna trim my tail of my embroidery thread. I am not going to trim the um, yarn because that's gonna get buried underneath. I'm gonna end up using in the end a large eyed needle and I'm gonna push the yarn to the wrong side like I did the one over here. So now that I trim my embroidery thread, you gotta make sure that in the back you have a puddle of yarn. And then I'm just gonna touch start. And it's stitching down my yarn. There it goes. Now you can see the black thread, but if I had the beige thread to match, you wouldn't see the stitching. And, and when I did try it the other day, doing this sample, I thought that a prettier thread might accent it nicely, but actually I didn't like it. But hey, you got to experiment. That's the way you're going to learn how to do all these wonderful things with your machine. So as this goes, for the moment, I'm going to stop because I want to recheck my yarn. I want to make sure I still have plenty of yarn puddled behind my machine that it can keep on feeding. And I'm going to go again. Isn't this cool? Like I always say, I love embellishing. I love my embroidery. And learn to experiment. Don't be afraid. When you are going to do yarn couching, as I said before, make sure you pick something that's not dense uh, and that is airy. 
so that it can travel. If it had to go next to one another, really close, you could end up having some issues. But this is a very open design. And you imagine if I did them closer together, which I could, um, this is, could be a great pillow accent, it could be a tote bed, could be part of a garment on the back of a jacket. But this is so wonderful. So I hope you're enjoying this. I'm going to let this keep going until it doesn't have much more to go. And that hole is guiding the yarn so beautifully that the needle is not missing the yarn, which is very important. I'm going to just guide my finger across here so that you can see how secure this is. It's really well stitched down. Even in spots that you thought, like right there, it's down. Coming down the home stretch. There we go. All right, it's done. So now I'm just gonna trim the thread. I'm not trimming the yarn. So I'm gonna take my hoop out. I will trim a tail of yarn that will give me enough that I'll be able to pull that to the wrong side with a very large eye needle. I'll show you the other one that I did pull to the wrong side. It was here. And I'm just gonna maybe make a little knot and then I'll trim it close. But on the right side, you would have never, let's see, it was here. Would have never known I pulled something to the wrong side there. So, I hope you enjoyed today's class with yarn couching with embroidery. So, have a good day and hope to see you again soon. Bye.